The freedom of Biafra and her people can never ever be compromised. The freedom quest for the nation of Biafra and her people was initiated in the 60s through the dogged effort of the late People's General, Chikwu Emikar or Dimagwu Ojukwu who led a couple of other combatant compatriots then serving in the Nigerian military. Virtually all of these heroes have died, leaving quite a number of veterans recruited into the Biafran army in defense of their fatherland alive today, recounting their experiences. That coordinated resistance against the combined military invasion of Nigeria and her foreign mercenaries led by the British, lasted for a period of three good years, 1967 to 1970, to the disappointment of the invaders, claiming not less than 3.5 million Biafrans including men, women, children, and even the elderly. Biafran economy, properties slash possessions, worth fortunes, were totally plundered according to chronicled accounts, an internationally mediated ceasefire slash peace was brokered with floated slogan that read, no victor, no vanquished, a program of triple R, reintegration, rehabilitation, and reconstruction of the entire old eastern and parts of the midwestern regions devastated by this annihilative war, was initiated. But instead of carrying out that policy as Biafrans were made to believe, it was the Yorubars and the House of Alanis that suffered no displacement nor destruction, that largely benefited, thus making the entire peace process guide earlier instituted to engender genuine reconciliation and unity amongst contending parties, delusional. It is most unfortunate to point out therefore, that the events that led to that unforgettable encounter, yet thrive today with recklessly abandonment against same Biafrans by successive Nigerian governments. The people are steadily being marginalized, victimized, kidnapped, gruesomely murdered, pauperized and enslaved across the Nigerian contraption. Incidents that prompted the Biafran armed resistance in defense of their people and homeland, territories, dating back between 1945 and 1970 are very much prevalent after over 40 years of hypocritical unity slash federalism. Undoubtedly, Biafra is a spirit. She is indestructible and had already regained her freedom, awaiting physical manifestation. Yes, Biafra is free. It is the spirit that controls the physical, most definitely. The events of today's Biafra restoration drive is tenaciously being anchored by Marzanamdi Kanu, the courageous, highly disciplined and intelligent leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, globally, can very vividly attest to that. Nigeria is steadily and helplessly convulsing to death as an entity, confirming the prophecies of this divinely ordained liberation crusader of our time. Marzanamdi Kanu has the singular mandate of championing the final phase of the inalienable freedom of his people from the pangs and trappings of slavery and deprivations orchestrated by Nigeria and Britain. The meticulous, intelligent, civilized, and very rare approach being adopted in the course of realizing this laudable generational objective even in the face of provocations and persecutions, is globally incomparable. Indeed, IPOB which is the largest indigenous movement ever to be known to humanity and recognized in freedom agitation, is an exceptional phenomenon. Biafrans have over the years, variously sacrificed for the unfettered restoration of the sovereignty of their fatherland. Marzanamdi Kanu alongside many others, within the global IPOB have made and are yet making invaluable sacrifices despite life-threatening persecutions from the enemies. Many have been extrajudicially arrested, imprisoned, or detained and murdered in this struggle by the agents of the Nigerian state. Finalized political merchants, saboteurs, traitors, and propagandists, both within and without, have persistently vilified the IPOB leader and the struggle in virtually all fronts, with abysmal failures hitting their every move all their evil strategies and enterprises will continue to suffer shame and disappointment. Come Thursday May 30, 2019, Biafrans both at home and in the diaspora, will yet defy every odd to accord our heroes and heroines both living and dead, well-deserved honor and recognition for their priceless sacrifices in the Biafra restoration struggle. This memorial will accompany it with a total sit-at-home observance across Biafra land. The slain chose to fall that we may live, and nothing less will suffice. The Biafra restoration project is insurmountable. All the IPOBs must therefore maintain high degree of discipline and defiantly get committed to the cause, oppositions on the way to our destination, nonetheless. We must neither mutate nor mortgage our blissful future and that of the upcoming Biafran generations, no matter the allurings of temporal comfort. We have come this far, staking our lives and wherewithal for this all-important project. The evolving developments in Nigeria are clear indications that we are close to the finishing line. The much-anticipated Biafra independence is quite imminent. 
The date and time heralding the trumpet blast for its declaration may not be known or determined but behold, it is in the horizon. Oh yes, Biafra is certainly free, and we must all get our eyes fixed on the ball for the appointed season of our glory as a people can no longer tarry. God's hand of providence and protection on behalf of his own children, Biafrans, is evidently clear in every ramification he is completely in charge. Isay. Isay. Isay.